Welcome to episode two of my beginner's guide to everything and scale. So if the whiteboard hasn't given away what we're going to talk about today, it is the control system for your, not only your locomotives, but your layout as well in some cases. There are currently three options available. There is DC, DCC, and there's also some Bluetooth stuff coming to market. We're going to bypass the Bluetooth stuff for today, mainly because it's relatively new, and I don't think the technology is quite there yet. It is been something that's been around for the larger scale locomotives for a hot minute now. We're starting to get it in the smaller scales. I don't have any experience with it, and I don't think you can do a whole lot of the extra stuff that you can do like in a DCC system um, in, in the Bluetooth uh, ecosystem quite yet. So let's start with DC. Now, if, if you're not familiar with it, it's going to be a little weird, but this is kind of historically what everybody has used for the last hundred years or so, right? Essentially, when we first started doing this, you would take mains voltage, use an actual transformer, that's why those old ones were super heavy, you would have a rotary knob and that would control the actual throttle of the locomotive. You would start at zero volts and you would work up to 12 to 15 or 18, kind of depending on the scale. In N scale, this is kind of what we're looking at, 12 or you know, zero to 12 volts, DC voltage. On the more modern systems, you use like one of those little wall wart switching power supplies to take your mains voltage down to roughly 12 volts and that uses one of those barrel connectors to go into the back of, of one of these. This is essentially just a circuit board, with a little bit of extras for safety and a potentiometer to vary the resistance so you can go from 0 volts on the rails all the way up to 12 volts on the rails at full throttle. There are Lots of different versions of these. You're going to see a whole bunch of them. This is a Bachman one that comes with most of their starter sets. This is the Cato one that comes with all their starter sets. See them in different colors, various configurations. But for the most part, they all work the same. There's a rotary knob that varies the voltage to your rail. And there's a switch that changes the direction. What this does is it actually switches the polarity of the rails. And no matter where you're at on here, that's going to be what it is. So if you're set at two-thirds throttle, you're at roughly eight volts. So when you switch this, it's going to be at eight, eight volts. This can cause you some problems because if you're going one direction and a relatively good clip and you flip it to the other direction, your motor's going to try to go the other direction almost immediately. If your motor's strong enough, you can cause issues with your gears. End scale, this isn't as big a deal. On HO, it definitely is. One of the nice things about the Cato system is there is a break in between that. So that gives you kind of a period of time between your switching should you not want to adjust your throttle. Also, if you're in the forward direction at half throttle, you want to come to a stop at a station and then go directly back to half throttle, you got a nice little stop feature in there. So a little bit of added value on the Cato system versus like a Bachman one. Also, there is a voltage output on the side of this. This allows you to run some of your turnout controls, as well as maybe some LEDs or something to that nature on your layout, should you want to do that. Keep in mind, those little wall warts don't have a whole lot of oomph. I think they're usually about one amp of power, so you can't do that with a whole lot of extra accessories. So how's that different from a DCC system? So if you are unfamiliar with a DCC system, that means digital command control. And unlike a DC control system, track voltage is always the same as input voltage. So if you have a power supply going into your command station, which is something like this right here, that voltage kind of works like a stream. So you think of it like this, you have water in a stream and it's going to divert in two directions. And there is a little bridge or a wall in there that flips back and forth that diverts the water one way or the other. It's essentially what's happening in your command station is it's taking that input voltage and it's switching it back and forth between the rails. So when it goes to this rail, the opposite side becomes the ground. When it switches back to this rail, the other side becomes the ground. So it's kind of like a switching power supply in that. 
However, because it's an on off situation, the waveform, so say you're looking at this with an oscilloscope, you get a square wave. And so voltage is always on, on this rail it's off, when it switches to this rail, this side's off. So they're always mirror images of one another and they're offset by essentially 180 degrees. Um, there are two widths, notice there's thicker and then thinner over here. That is your binary code. A thick is a zero and I think a thin is a one. It might be opposite, but it doesn't really matter. That's how you get the signal going down the rails. But keep in mind that these don't overlap. When this one's on, it directly goes to the other rail. So essentially what this means is there's always 12 volts to your decoder in this situation. So whether your locomotives are moving or not, they always have power. In this situation, if your locomotive isn't moving, there is no power. So like you want a locomotive sitting on a siding with the lights dim, that can only be done essentially with the DCC system. That being said, there's also other things you can do with your DCC system. That signal can also control uh, other DCC devices. So what that means is you could have lights in passenger cars that function with it. There's functions on your, uh, on your locomotive. You can switch between your taillight and your headlight or ditch lights. Also on sound locomotives, you can individually control all of your different sounds. And then if you have DC control electronics on your layout, they can control lights, switches, lots of other things. So there's a whole lot you can do with a DCC system that you can't easily do with a DC system. So why would you choose one over the other? Well, there's a significant difference in price. So the price basically comes down to kind of the simplicity of a DC system. There ain't a whole lot that you need to put into a little circuit board with a little bit of current protection and a few other things and a cheap potentiometer versus a command station that has to do digital signal processing. It has to have a lot of power control. Um, there's lots of separate little things like local net buses, that type of stuff. There's lots of processing power that you have to build into one of these compared to just varying the voltage into one of these. So startup costs for a DC system are much more affordable than say a DCC system. Example being a one of these you could find used or even new anywhere from 20 to 50 dollars somewhere in that range just to get started a command control system can start roughly at 100 bucks used kind of 200 dollars range for a new unit up from there uh, there are lots of different brands and when we go into uh we're, we're going to decide which one of these we want to go into the next episode will be DC and the episode after that will be DCC and we'll talk about choosing the correct version of this for what you want to do but it has to be noted now when you're thinking about all of this these two things are inverses in in the world so starting in DC is really simple there's not a whole lot to it all you do is hook up the track to this forward reverse your locomotive light comes on and forward the tail light comes on in reverse. It's just easy to do. However, on a DCC system, you need to learn to program all of your locomotives to the proper road addresses. So by default, they're all on uh, address three. So you go to run one locomotive and all of them start moving. Uh, you need to learn to speed match those to make them work together. You need to learn how to call up different systems. Um, if you're inside of your remote or throttle, there are lots of sub menus you need to learn. Uh, it's not just as simple as picking up one of these and forward and backwards easy. On this, there are lots of different, different things you can do, right? So there is a learning curve to getting started in DCC. However, as you move forward, as you get more involved in the hobby, turning a DC system into a complex layout becomes drastically more complex. Uh, there are lots of old articles talking about how complex the systems had to be to make different locomotives run at different speeds in different districts, controlling all of those things, 
the massive circuit panels you had to put together for switchboards and that type of stuff. This is very complex to make work at large scale. Even the layout I have behind me to make work on a single DC system would be very difficult. Running two different loops at different speeds, you would need two different control systems. So, I mean, there gets to be some cost adding up into that as well, right? However, if you already have the learning curve, the complexity figured out here on how to run your system, making it more complex is drastically more simple. Um, adding more turnouts is simply buying another decoder for your turnouts and wiring them in. Um, it's just simple to do. It's kind of plug and play at that point. You just put an address to those things and you flip the switch inside your throttle and your, your turnouts are being thrown. You want to run five different loops. As soon as you know how to get your locomotives addressed, you can run as many locomotives as you want on those loops all at different speeds and you don't have to do any messing around. All of that can be wired in parallel off of one unit and it just functions. Um, there are some niche things in both of these that are more complex, but for the most part, once you understand the DCC system you're using, doing complex operations and that type of stuff is so much simpler. So there's a trade-off when it comes to the learning curve on both of these. So take all of this into consideration. And uh, like I said, the next episode, we're going to go into your first DC system. And the episode after that, we are going to go into your first DCC system. So I will see you next week for this. And uh, have a good one. I know.